morning, everyone, and welcome to the Cook County Health Foundation fifth annual gala, The Heart of the Matter. We are really grateful for your participation and your involvement and in our efforts to expand access to and improve the quality of care for the county's most vulnerable residents. I am honored to serve as the Cook County Board Health Foundation's board's chairman. My name is Joe Flanagan. The board was founded in 2011. The foundation believes that every Cook County resident deserves the opportunity to live a healthy life. We raise funds, advocate, and educate the public to work for, towards uh, this goal through the support of Cook County Health, our public, our great public health system. Today, our board of directors has 15 committed members, and I want to thank them, and I'm going to ask them to stand, to, when I read their name, please stand, and then hold your applause to the end. I want to particularly thank the gala committee, which consists of Lori Montana, James Otto, Abe Thompson, and Bill Kling. And I, I also wanted to specially recognize our past chairman, Fred Labette, who did a wonderful job. Thank you, Fred, as always. And our other wonderful board, committed board, uh, board of uh, directors, Isabel Goosen, Bob Henderson, Peter O'Brien, Dr. Phil Sheridan, Bill Quinlan, and Ashley Gabrish. So please stand up and take a stand. Thank you. All of these people do this for, uh, because of their commitment to all the people in the county that need access to great quality health care. The foundation also is a dedicated and effective associate board of young professionals, many of who are volunteering tonight. We are grateful for their support and their ongoing efforts. Many thanks to the community and many thanks to the wonderful volunteers who are here helping out tonight. So a round of applause for them as well. I wanted to especially recognize our new executive director, Debbie Hind. Debbie, where are you? Right over there, Debbie. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Debbie's been with us uh, for, since the beginning of the year and has done a wonderful job in, 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 in helping us continue to build this great foundation. Uh, the, day, the foundation also deeply appreciates the many sponsors who have supported this gala. Uh, they are listed in the presentation, scrolling on the screens to my right and my left. And a special thank you to uh, Grosvenor Capital Management, Method, uh, Method Electronics De Beer for their extraordinary support of this evening. And I also want to thank Good Foods for underwriting the fruit, which are the centerpieces of your table tonight. The fruit at the end of the night will be donated to the Heartland Alliance City Pantry. So feel, feel free to look at them, smell them, don't touch them or eat them, okay? We're all here to make Cook County healthier. We're grateful for the tremendous work of the Cook County uh, health team. We've got so many of them here today. We've got physicians, we've got nurses, dietitians, and many other health professionals who day in and day out deliver extremely high quality care through the two systems, the two major hospitals, and the 15 clinics throughout the system. So if you're a member of the CCH team, please stand so we can recognize you. Come on, everybody. Get up. Thank you all for your dedication and commitment. We're fortunate that you have chosen to work at Cook County Health. We have, and we've interspersed a lot of the, the docs, nurses, and other professionals throughout your table. So I'd love to make sure that you have the opportunity to talk to them, ask them about their experiences, and most importantly, why they do the great work that they do. 
Finally, I want to thank a number of other dignitaries who have joined us tonight, particularly Cook County Commissioner Bridget Degnan. You can please stand up. Uh, Cook County Commissioner Donna Miller. Cook County Commissioner Scott Britton. Cook County Commissioner Bridget Gaynor. Cook County Commissioner Dennis Deer. And Cook County Commissioner Donna Miller. Thank you all for your ongoing support of the health system. And we are thrilled to have Dr. Allison Arwadi join us tonight. She is the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Health, who is representing Mayor Lightfoot this evening. And we'd like to ask Dr. Arwadi if she can give us some remarks on behalf of uh, the city of Chicago. Thank you. I'll be brief, but I wanted to come on behalf of Mayor Lori Lightfoot to say congratulations, thank you for all the work that you've done and the work that's yet to come, and to wish you the best and most successful evening that's possible. At the Chicago Department of Public Health, we absolutely rely on Cook County Health for providing the clinical services that are key to keeping Chicago and Cook County healthy. The mayor, as you know, is really committed to health equity. I know that President Preckwinkle and the county commissioners are equally committed to this goal. And Cook County Health is the, the, the foundation and really the center of being able to be successful in this. I also want to thank Dr. Shannon um, and the many physicians and healthcare providers who are here at the gala for all of your dedication and hard work. I am a primary care physician myself, and I really depend on being able to send my patients who do not have insurance uh, to Cook County Health, especially when they're needing specialty care. But particularly when Cook County Health is seeing so many uninsured patients, the need for resources is huge. And the importance of Cook County Foundation, um, particularly thank you to Joe Flanagan and the whole uh, Cook County Health Foundation Board for your efforts both to uh, raise awareness of Cook County Health and raise funds to support these critical health initiatives. Uh, we can't do it in the city of Chicago without Cook County Health. And thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you very much, Doctor. Appreciate it. We appreciate you making the time uh, to join us tonight. Uh, now, a very special thank you to Cook County Board President, President Preckwinkle, tonight's honorary chairman, for her incredible sustained effort and support on behalf of Cook County Health Foundation and her commitment to a healthy county. Thank you, President Preckwinkle. <laughs> Cook County Health Foundation is proud to support the work of Cook County Health, one of the largest health systems in the country. From the busiest trauma center in the city to caring for over 40,000 pe people with heart disease and diabetes, to annually filling more than 2 million patient prescriptions through its pharmacies. Cook County Health is the center of building Cook County's uh, residents, make sure that they build healthier lives. I am really pleased and thrilled to introduce the leader of this phenomenal health system, Dr. Jay Shannon. He, cl he claims I'm the only person to call him Dr. Jay. Um, as a physician, Dr. Sh Sh Shannon uh, specialized in pulmonary and critical care and spent most of his professional career at Cook County Health. Uh, Doc, thanks for your tireless work on behalf of the system, and uh, I'll leave it in your hands. All right, Joe. It's nice to follow a guy where you don't have to uh, adjust the microphone uh, that much. So uh, welcome, and I'm grateful to everybody who has come this evening. I'm Jay Shannon. I'm the CEO of the health system. I want to give a special thank you to the foundation uh, for the tremendous effort that they've put forth for tonight's activities. And particularly, again, I want to thank Debbie Hind, our new executive director. She's done a fabulous job. Thank you, Debbie. 
<clears throat> and, and I want to thank the Association Board, which has uh, really modeled, actually, for the whole board the commitment that it takes to not only raise funds for the health system, but to increase awareness for the health system. And I'm grateful for their uh, leadership and their engagement. Lastly, I want to make sure I thank Karen Stanzik, our executive director, our chief communications and marketing officer. Karen and I serve as a liaison to the foundation board, but Karen and Debbie are really thick as thieves, making sure that the foundation board is connected with what we're doing and who the leaders are across the organization, particularly our clinical leadership. You know, over, over the past 10 years, we've been working to transform Cook County Health into a modern patient-centered health system focused primarily on health care rather than sick care. This is a big pivot for an organization that has its roots in hospital-based reactive care. But as the theme tonight and our honorees, the Food Depository and the American Medical Association, know full well, and we're increasingly understanding as an organization, health really happens outside of the hospital and outside of the clinic encounter. And so this focus on chronic conditions that lead to huge health disparities in Chicago, like diabetes and cardiovascular disorders, is particularly apt uh, at this moment. I want to thank President Preckwinkle and the county board, who are critical partners as we continue this transformation as a healthcare system. Helping us set the strategy, though, is our own health system board, which was created in 2008, and today consists of 11 lay volunteers who put in huge hours of time helping us to discern policies, strategies, and direction. And I, I want to make sure I recognize a number of them tonight. You've heard already about Commissioner Dennis Deer. Commissioner Deer, because he chairs the Health and Hospital Committee of the County Board, is a voting member of our Health System Board. Also with us tonight are Directors Mary Driscoll, Mary Guggenheim, David Menar, and Mike Ketting. And I want to thank you all for your contributions and efforts. As, as Joe pointed out, it's really the staff uh, that move the meter for our patients. And they're committed to providing high quality, compassionate care, regardless of a, a, a person's ability to pay, which is unique. Many of our medical staff are here tonight. I want to ask them to stand for a moment of recognition, the medical staff of Cook County that are in attendance. And while they're standing, <clears throat> I, want to, uh, I want to particularly, I want to particularly recognize our chair of cardiology, Dr. Rami Dukey. Rami. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm, I'm old enough to, to know Rami when he was a chief resident, running circles around most of the medical staff, and he runs our cardiology division, which tomorrow will be honored by the American Heart Association for its excellence in cardiology services. So thank you, Rami. We're, we're sorry that, uh, that our, our chair of endocrinology, Dr. Leon Fogelfeld, isn't, isn't able to make it tonight because of some personal uh, issues, but he wanted to send his uh, thanks to everybody who's attending. They do what they do because of people like Jada McNeil, a patient who you're going to hear from later on this evening. Patients like J Jada drive us to do what we do at Cook County Health, and I, I shared with her uh, earlier tonight that as much blabbing as people like me and people who are at the tops of systems like this do, the most compelling thing that you can hear is the story of a person who's been touched by our healthcare system. I want you to think about the fact that tonight, in the past year, we had 100,000 visits into our health system related to diabetes and heart disease. We're taking care of in our system some 40,000 individuals who have diabetes and probably an even larger number than that of people who have the metabolic syndrome, which is the precursor to diabetes. When you look at our health plan, which is today serving one in three Medicaid enrollees in the county, 
It has about 80,000 individuals who are affected by diabetes, obesity, or the metabolic syndrome. So these are crises that we're facing, and I'm particularly glad that tonight we're focusing on these common chronic conditions, which may not have the glamour impact of some of the other things that we do, but are really those things that are driving yawning more t uh, differences in life expectancy across Cook County. We know, we've known for a long time that poor diet, lack of exercise, and cigarette smoking contribute to these diseases, and we've struggled to make a dent in managing them, much less present, preventing them, these so-called social determinants of health, things that Dr. Arwadi, Dr. Mason, and others are trying to push from the public health perspective. You know, it's striking, and I'm, I'm grateful for the partnership that we've had for now some five years with the Greater Chicago Food Depository under the leadership of Kate Mayer. And, you know, I've told people this story. Kate's heard it enough times it's, she's going to cringe. The first time she and I met was at a food summit at the health system, and uh, she came up and showed me a map of the county, and it had our clinics on it. And she said, are you familiar with this map? And I said, sure, you know, those are our health centers. And then she showed me another map of the county with a bunch of dots on it. Are you familiar with this one? I said, no. And she said, that's where our food distribution centers are. And your clinics aren't aware of where we are either. So we started a very intentional partnership a few years ago, screening individuals who come to us for care. And it turns out that depending on what, which of our centers you're at, 25 to 30 percent of the people we care for screen positive for food insecurity. Through our partnership with the Food Depository, we started a strategy where we identify those individuals, we assist them with SNAP benefits, which, by the way, the new public rule changes from the administration in Washington are going to threaten. But we sign these people up for SNAP benefits. We give them information about food distribution centers in their neighborhoods, and importantly, on a regular basis, food trucks from the Food Depository come to our health centers and you'll see people queued up, they walk in the front of that food truck and they walk out with typically 20 pounds of fresh produce and food for their families. I shared with our board last month that we recently surpassed 500,000 pounds of fresh produce and food distributed this way. Similarly, uh, expanding our, the lifestyle centers that Dr. Fogelfeld innovated with at the old Fantas Clinic. These are centers where we teach people about the intersection of their nutrition choices, their cooking styles, their exercise habits, and we take people into simulated stores, simulated kitchens, and we help them to think in a different way about living with chronic conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney disease, high cholesterol. Along with these uh, partners, we are also uh, partnering with community partners like the Black Oak Center uh, to help bring healthy food to our communities. So we're proud to offer these markets in our clinics, particularly in the Southland, where the Black Oak Center, which is an African-American owned uh, farm and produce center, they bring these fresh alternatives to our clinics and offer them in a partnership that we have where we match dollar for dollar SNAP benefits with dollars from the health system. So $10 buys you $20 of produce from the Black Oak Center. People tell us that interventions like this are really life-changing for them. And you need to think about that. We've got people in the wealthiest country in the world at the wealthiest moment in its history who are thanking us for the fact that we can bring food to their table. That's something that we all ought to pause about as we're eating tonight. If you want to know why we do what we do, come and visit one of our centers on these food distribution days. We're doing these things in conjunction with the excellent clinical services that our staff bring. As I mentioned to you, uh, recently Stroger Hospital was recognized by U.S. News & World Report for excellence in heart failure care. And that was at the same time that we were being recognized for excellence in neurology and neurosurgical services and in gastrointestinal services. <clears throat> I want to I close by saying that the uh, support that we received from you tonight 
will help us expand these services as we tackle significant problems of health inequity in our communities. These epidemics that we're seeing of overweight, heart disease, and diabetes, we can't meet those services without the wind in our sails that you can bring to us. So I want to thank you again for your support. Enjoy your meal, and we'll talk again in a little bit. I am honored to introduce our honorary chair, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. She has served as president of Cook County Board since 2010, after serving as the alderman of the fourth ward for 19 years. Uh, she has invested incredibly, personally, politically, in every way in county health and wellness has been a wonderful supporter of the system for a long time. And, and it's been a great support of the foundation and the health of the system. Please join in welcoming President Tony Preckling. Good evening. Thank you, Joe. I'm honored, I'm honored to be joining you to support Cook County Health and the patients we serve every day. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Whether this is your first gala or your fifth, we're grateful to have you with us. I want to acknowledge again the commissioners who are here, Commissioners Britton, Deere, Degnan, Gaynor, and Miller. Thank you very much for joining us. And I want to thank Dr. Allison R. Wadi from Chicago's Department of Public Health for bringing us greetings on behalf of Mayor Lightfoot. Thank you. Last week was our first ever racial equity week in Cook County. During that week, we tried to raise awareness around the issues that have long impacted people of color. We talked about the inequities people of color face and the opportunity gap that we see in everything from income to education to public safety. Tonight we're going to talk specifically about health care and our health care system that has been working for 180 years, 180 years to advance health equity. A recent analysis by the New York University School of Medicine showed that Chicago's lifespan gap was the largest in the country, the largest in the country. In the street of old neighborhood downtown, residents live on the average to be 90 years old. While in Englewood, on the south side of Chicago, residents can expect to live 60 years. This is totally unacceptable. And while the reasons for this gap are extensive, it boils down to access. We see the impact of the lack of access to good health care and, and that impact that it has on life expectancies. We see it in patients who come into our system with uncontrolled diabetes or heart disease. It's not unusual for patients to have both, resulting in dire outcomes like amputation and decreased quality of life. In many cases, these diseases could have been identified in a primary care setting and treated early, preventing unnecessary suffering and cost. In other words, they're preventable diseases, and those suffering most from them are often poor people of color, people who lack access. To combat this, Cook County Health is increasing access to preventive treatment in communities where patients live, ensuring that they have the care they need at the right place and the right time. And that's why we're here tonight. Your support will fund important education, nutrition, and lifestyle services to help our patients improve their health. Your support will help us create healthier communities and help us advance health equity across Cook County. Your support will help us close the gap between Streeterville and Englewood, 
because we can all agree that your zip code should not predict your life expectancy. Everyone deserves access to health care. I'd like to take a moment to thank Joe Flanagan, the chairman of the Cook County Health Foundation, and the Foundation Board for their commitment to our health care system. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge the corporations, individuals, and civic leaders who are here this evening. Thank you for taking time to get to know Cook County Health and for your support. To Dr. Shannon, our Cook County Health doctors, nurses, administrators, thank you for your unwavering dedication to the patients and communities you serve. And thank you to the Independent Governing Board, led by Hill Hammock, for your support today and every day as we work together to advance health equity across Cook County. Thank you. I would also like to acknowledge and thank our past president of the Board of Directors, Fred Lebed, for his dedication to this effort. Thank you all. And now I'm pleased to join Joe Flanagan to present this year's Ruth Rothstein Excellent in Care Awards. For those of you who did not know Ruth, she taught us that health care is a right and not a privilege. For decades, she led the fight to bring equity to health care. From her days at Mount Sinai to her time in our health system, she never stopped advocating for the most vulnerable. She would be immensely proud of this year's awardees. Our first honoree this evening is Dr. Patrice Harris, president of the American Medical Association, for her trailblazing work and leadership in making equity in health care a reality for all. Dr. Harris is a renowned child and adolescent psychiatrist, and she is the 174th president of the American Medical Association and the first African-American woman to hold this position. As a private practicing physician, public health administrator, and patient advocate, Dr. Harris has proven to be a leader for her entire career. She served on the AMA's Board of Trustees since 2011, including a term as chair. She also served as chair of the AMA Opioid Task Force since its inception in 2014. She's been a leader in the transformation of the AMA to advocate for health equity and policy changes including the Affordable Care Act. Beyond the AMA, Dr. Harris has held positions of leadership with the American Psychiatric Association, the Georgia Psychiatric Physicians Association, the Medical Association of Georgia, and the Big Cities Health Coalition. Dr. Harris is a West Virginia native and earned her MD at West Virginia University. She completed her psychiatric residency as well as fellowships in child and adolescent psychiatry and forensic psychiatry at Emory University of School of Medicine. For her leadership and dedication to transforming not just the lives of her patients, but the organizations that advocate for them, it's my great pleasure to present the Ruth M. Rothstein Excellence in Care Award to Dr. Patrice Harris. Well, thank you for that warm welcome and thank you to the foundation for this award. It is an honor to be with you tonight and again to receive this award. I do have a couple of folks to thank and a couple of folks to recognize and a few uh, remarks. 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Mildred Olivier and Mr. Abe Thompson for their connection to you tonight. I really appreciate your support. I've known Mildred for several years. I've only known Abe for about a year, and both of these folks are so supportive to me, and I really appreciate you as well. I also want to thank my fellow colleagues of the American Medical Association. As one of my family members said just this past June at my inauguration, I love the AMA. So I love the AMA and I so appreciate uh, the support of my fellow colleagues. As president, I get to be the face of the AMA, but I think you all know that there are so many uh, who work behind the scenes uh, to make me look good. And so to my colleagues at the American Medical Association, thank you. I also, yes. I also want to recognize someone who uh, probably uh, does not always get the recognition, recognition but does the work. And that is Kasonia Holly. Let me just tell you, she, she's a staff member at the AMA, but I believe for the past eight years, she's used her lunch hours to go and work with the homeless here in Chicago. Uh, so I wanted to say a special thank you also for your commitment and dedication. Being a proud ambassador for the AMA. I want to thank you all in this room for your dedication to public health and the health of the public. These are certainly challenging times for our nation as we confront many public health crises. But those in this room and those in this room who support those on the front lines work hard every day. You see the struggles of our patients up close, and again, you're on the front lines. And so again, I want to say a note of appreciation and thanks to everyone in this room. You know, as, as scientists, as physicians, we rely on the data, as we should. But behind every data point, there are patients and there are stories. So let me just tell you two stories tonight and then say a little bit about our work at the AMA. Earlier this year, I was at a conference in New Orleans. It was a health disparities conference sponsored by Xavier University. The mayor of New Orleans gave a keynote, and she shared the story of Miss Ida. Now, Miss Ida was cooking Sunday dinner, and I know some of you in this room are from the South, so there's going to be a Southern flavor to this. But Miss Ida was cooking Sunday dinner, and yes, she was using cooking oil, but as I always say, everything in moderation, right? Um, but unfortunately, Miss Ida spilled the hot oil on her feet, and she had significant first and second degree burns. Now, just to let you know, this story has a good ending. But Miss Ida didn't go to the hospital. Instead, she called her son who bathed her feet in some salve. That's a southern thing, for those of you who don't know, maybe in the north you call it ointment. And wrapped her feet in a cardboard box with duct tape. Now again, ultimately there was a good end to this story because of those of us who work in public health. But the story made me ask several questions as I was listening to it. Did Miss Ida have insurance? Why didn't she seek emergency care? Why didn't she go to the emergency room? It was certainly an emergency, right? Did she have transportation? Were there other barriers to her seeking care? And what were her previous relationships with the healthcare system? Listening to that story, I was reminded of my own story. About 15 years ago, pre-ACA, I volunteered at a free clinic. It was, of course, advertised um, that this was the day that you could come and receive services for your unmet health needs. I arrived at around 5 in the morning. The lines were already wrapped around the building, a huge, huge building um, in Atlanta. This was an all-day event. And there was a woman there, 
and the nurses took her blood pressure, and it was about 180 over 150. And they called me over, and I said, ma'am, you really need to go to Grady. And she said, I can't go to Grady. And I said, ma'am, this is a medical emergency. We won't be able to give you medication to reduce your blood pressure at this point. And she said, I really don't want to go. I already have a bill at Grady, and I really don't want to owe any more money. I had to literally beg her, because emergency services were there, I had to beg her to go to Grady. This as Madam President said, is unacceptable. Each of you doubtless has a similar story to share. And I want to tell you that the American Medical Association is your partner and is committed to reaching the point where we do not have to hear such stories. That's right, because the AMA, just in case you didn't know, believes that all Americans, everyone in this country, should have affordable, meaningful, quality health care and health coverage. At this year's annual meeting, yes. At this year's annual meeting, our House of Delegates stated emphatically that health in all its dimensions is a basic human right. And as an organization, we have re renewed our commitment to health equity in a new and comprehensive way with increased resources and increased attention from the board, our CEO, and throughout the organization. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, we just hired our first chief health equity officer, Dr. Aletha Maybank, and she, yes, we're very excited about that. And she will be responsible for leading our new Center for Health Equity. But again, we are not interested in having health equity and the issues around health disparities off to the side. We are committed to having health equity embedded within the DNA of the AMA. And we also want to make sure we model, right? We model for others what we expect of others. And so probably very soon you will be hearing about our increased commitment uh, to the work that you all do right here in Chicago so that we then can model uh, what we expect from other resourced health organizations in this country. So again, it all begins with access, as the President just said, to a quality affordable care because there is no health equity without access. And let me add, I wouldn't be a psychiatrist worth my salt unless I said that includes access to mental health care. Now you all know the AMA supported the Affordable Care Act and we have been a leading voice against its repeal. We also strongly support safety net programs like Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program. And again, we also strongly support and work uh, for parity for mental health. Health equity also means culturally competent care. A term I use is cultural humility. We have to make sure we all have cultural humility. And we have to make sure that the faces of the physicians in this country match the faces of our patients, match the communities that we serve. And so we are certainly very committed uh, to increasing the diversity of the physician workforce. Again, not just as a checkbox, not just to have more underrepresented representation in medicine, that's the beginning, but this is all in the service of health equity. Health equity also means increased resources for preventing heart disease and diabetes, conditions that shorten lives and reduce quality of life. And of course, uh, these two chronic conditions affect communities of color at higher rates than others. And so the AMA is investing heavily in programs to increase the awareness of prediabetes and hypertension among physicians and the public. 
And health equity means addressing the social determinants of health. It means addressing transportation needs. It means addressing food insecurity. It means addressing housing. It means addressing employment. These are all very critical uh, to the health outcomes, of course, in the Chicago area, but again, throughout this country. And that's why your work here at the Cook County Health Foundation is so vitally important. You help fill the gap in patient reimbursement to be sure that all have quality services. You help fund specialized NICU equipment to help babies born prematurely. And you have the flexibility to address additional needs in patients' lives. Again, access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And as we heard at the table, not only access, but also teaching communities that don't know and that are interested in how to prepare. I remember at Fulton County when I was the director and we had a teaching kitchen, we had a session where we taught how uh, our uh, uh, staff how to cook uh, broccoli. And I remember one little boy said, Mommy, I didn't know broccoli could taste this good. And so that is the importance of the work uh, that we do. Again, the transportation issues and helping individuals living with heart disease and diabetes manage their conditions. And so the support of foundations like yours is absolutely critical to the work that physicians do, that other health professionals do, and we thank you for that. Now, as I've been speaking, some of you may be thinking, none of this sounds like the AMA that I know. If that's the case, it's time for you to rethink your view of the American Medical Association. The American Medical Association is changing and evolving to meet the challenges of our time. Not only, as you heard, am I the first African-American woman to lead the AMA, but the president who preceded me, Dr. Barbara McEnany, is a woman, and the president who will follow me, Dr. Susan Bailey, is a woman. And so I've coined the term, yes, that's a historic moment. And so I've coined the term, we three for us, because it is an historic moment, a watershed moment in the leadership of medicine. Now we have more work to do, but we can celebrate we three, because we are the obvious, visible change. But as I hope I've described to you tonight, the change runs much deeper. The AMA is changing and evolving to meet the needs of 21st century patients, and as our former president and one of Chicago's own, Barack Obama says, the future rewards those who press on. And so the AMA looks forward to working in partnership with you as we press on towards a healthier nation. Because, as I saw on the screen, everyone in this country deserves the opportunity to be healthy. Thank you so very much. Tonight's second award goes to an individual and an organization that we've been proud to partner with for the past four years. Kate Mayer, the CEO of the Greater Chicago Food Depository. The Greater Chicago Food Depository is the hub of a network of more than 700 partner organizations and programs working to bring food, dignity, and hope to our neighbors across Chicago and Cook County people who struggle with in, inadequate resources to access food. As I mentioned before, it is a matter of access. Many of Chicago's communities lack fresh produce and grocery stores, and the availability of healthy food options is scarce. Since 2015, Cook County Health has partnered with the Food Depository's Fresh Truck Program the program provides fresh produce to food insecure patients at Cook, County, Cook County's community health centers. 
Since first starting the program, this partnership has resulted in more than 200 visits to more than a dozen of our health centers. Again, as Dr. Shannon said, collectively the fresh trucks have distributed more than 500,000 pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables to nearly 27,000 people. At this time, At this time, I would like to invite you to watch a brief video about the Fresh Truck Partnership. truck is really important um, to our patients um, just because we see a lot of patients with diabetes and some health related issues um, due to diet and so it's been really great to be able to offer that next step and, and a resource and saying uh, we can educate you in the clinic and do your, during your visits but you also have access to this great resource of actual fruits and vegetables that we can give to you for free. I think it's it's just bridging that gap and really kind of coming full circle for patients who really need it who maybe can't afford it or don't have access to it maybe just need education on what are fruits and vegetables, what can I make with it. The impact that I see is um, just the gratefulness of being able to say, okay, I, I'm exploring this new this new diet, um, look what I got, things that they like and things that they try, um, new recipes, um, and just feeling more confident about taking charge and empowering their, themselves with their diet um, and trying new things. And so the patients that do come back and see me, they're always really excited and always wanting to know when the next one is. We're not fixing the whole issue around food insecurity, but we are at least taking that next step. And, and we see something in our community that's missing. There's a gap there. I think it's really important to try to do something about it. And I think that in that way, we're, we're trying to address it. We're trying to do something, even if it's a baby step, um, just a little step in the right direction. Kate Mayer has been an advocate, a leader, a trailblazer in addressing food insecurity in Cook County, and we're proud to present this award to her and the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Thank you, Madam President, and congratulations, Dr. Harris. I hope I never have to take a stage after you ever again. Uh, but I just did. You're right, Debbie. Almost exactly five years ago, on a very hot and humid day, I found myself standing in a food pantry in the basement of a church on the north side of the city of Chicago. I was there because the Greater Chicago Food Depository, in partnership with Feeding America, had just released a study on hunger in our community. And the headline of the story about the surge in need all across Cook County had caught the attention of reporters at assignment desks. And so I was waiting for a television camera crew to come and do an interview about the fact that we were now seeing more than 800,000 people just in Cook County who were turning to food pantries and soup kitchens and shelters to get the food that they needed to get by. And on that hot day as I was waiting for the camera crew to arrive and I was paging through the report, there was another set of statistics 
that was revealed, and in some ways far more staggering and sobering than the magnitude of the need. And that was a part of the report that detailed the health of the men and women and children who were turning to food pantries. For most of you in this room, those statistics won't surprise you. You heard Dr. Shannon cite them earlier. More than a third of the people turning to food pantries in this community have diabetes. Two thirds of the people have hypertension. We have epidemic rates of obesity. We know that food is medicine and we love to say that. And yet for so many of our neighbors, that medicine is out of reach. Armed with that information, I will be honest, I don't think we really knew what to do with it at the Greater Chicago Food Depository. We knew that we needed to do something a little bit differently. We had to look at the food that we were distributing. We had to think differently about the partners that we were working with. And so it was I found myself a year later at Cook County Health and Hospital in a room where I met Dr. Shannon for the first time and his story is accurate. But as we talked over dinner, I also shared that we both were scratching our heads a little bit because we weren't quite sure what we were doing in that room together. And now comes what I think is really one of the most important parts of the story. At a time when it feels like so many public institutions are failing us, we came to this magnificent organization and said, we see a need. And rather than turning us away or saying, that's not really the business we're in, what we encountered was an extraordinary group of individuals, starting with the president of Cook County Board, commission members, members of the hospital board, Dr. Shannon, his team, physicians, nurses, social workers, men and women who work at clinics, including the security staff and people who man the front desks, Every level of the organization, what we have found are people who are committed to collaborating, to thinking about the needs of the men and women they serve, and thinking about how together we solve this problem. So while I feel incredibly grateful to receive this award, in truth, There's a table of people over there from the Greater Chicago Food Depository who every day do the heavy lifting. And in truth, we do this in partnership with Cook County Health and Hospital Systems every day. So thank you, not just for the award for which we are very grateful, but for the partnership and for what it means for this great community. Thank you. So there's a couple of hard acts to follow. <laughs> yeah, um, I w- <laughs> it's uh, it's great to be up here again, and I, I just want to thank as we as we uh, wind down the evening, and we've got a couple of more treasures for you. I want to take a moment also to thank my wife Robin. Uh, she's in the back with a, a table of our friends, and. Robin's on, the, Robin's on the faculty of the College of Nursing at University of Illinois and uh, had a bit of a midlife, 
you know, uh, Damascus moment where she transitioned from critical care nursing to public health nursing and learning how important social determinants of health and public health uh, were for children that we serve. She's now become a leader nationally in how we do a better job uh, taking care of kids. And that includes addressing the conditions that we're talking about tonight that lead to these chronic conditions. So I'm, I'm grateful for Robin and their support and our leadership. Um, it's my pleasure now to, to give you a little bit of a vignette that was created by Ogilvy. That's a renowned uh, integrated creative network that has offices here in Chicago. Any of you who are here a year or two ago saw the uh, beautiful video that they did on our neonatal ICU. This is the second time that Ogilvy has donated their resources and talent for the benefit of their, our patients. And I'm very, very grateful to the folks at Ogilvy for the work that they did creating this video as well as the convenient cookbook, something you'll learn more about as you uh, watch the video. And so um, I think, uh, are we gonna watch the video now? All right, so cue the video. I'll watch with you and then a few more thoughts. Two years ago. I was pre-diabetic two years ago. That day started out for an eye exam. After she dilated my eyes, she immediately took my blood pressure. She started asking me the stroke questions, and she sent me here. A lot of people have the perception that healthy eating is expensive. In my community, we have a lot of convenience stores. We didn't have the resources to go to a top grocery store and get fresh produce. So it was very easy for us to, hey, go to the corner store, grab a 25 cent bag of ramen noodles. There is no intervention in cardiac disease that can happen without the partnership of diet and nutrition, of knowing what's good for you, of knowing how much of knowing what not to eat, of knowing what to eat and when to eat it, of knowing your body and how it reacts to certain things. Healthy eating can be really good and affordable. You know, the soul food is good for the soul and just food, period, makes people happy. I hope that the impact from the convenient cookbook will get everyone on track to eating healthy, to let everybody know that, hey, health is wealth, and the more healthy eating that we do, it can help save our lives. Because as a cardiologist, you quickly realize but how you really impact patients is when you change how they think. So low-cost, healthy recipes, which my patients can create in their kitchens, that's what is going to have an impact on them, and that sort of ripples and pond effect, it's, it's immeasurable. Whatever you're putting in your mouth is not worth your eyesight, is not worth your limbs, is not worth your life. People need the simple tools so that they can make better choices, so that they can extend their lives, so that they can be the best person they can be. Uh, fabulous. So th th thank, thank, thanks again so much to our partners at Ogilvy. And I want to also thank uh, Chicago chefs uh, Diane Davila, uh, Sadika Emanuel, Bridget Flagg, and Lamar Moore, who contributed recipes for the convenient cookbook that will be distributed to patients at our lifestyle centers and will also be available to download from our website in late October. If our chefs are here, will they stand up and be recognized? I I'm hoping we've got a handful of them here. <clears throat> Thank you for what you do for our patients, and uh, maybe we'll see you at our Lifestyle Center teaching a class in the future. And next, and I want to introduce one of the stars of our video, Jada McNeil. Just like every one of our patients, Ms. McNeil has her own individual and personal story that she's going to share with you. But tonight, Ms. McNeil represents all the patients that we so proudly serve. She is and they are the reason that we've gathered tonight. 
Jada, thanks so much for being here tonight and sharing your story. Good evening. My name is Jada McNeil and I've been a Cook County Health patient since 2017. I started coming to Cook County Health Lifestyle Center Okay. <laughs> when I was asked by my then physician if I would be interested and available in joining their, their Lifestyle Center's weight loss program. Realize, realizing at that point that I needed professional help, I agreed. It was not until the results of my blood work was read that I was in worse shape than I already assumed. Coming to the Lifestyle Center for weight loss program, to, coming to the Lifestyle Center's weight loss program for, for professional assistance provided me with a wealth of information. We all know in order to lose weight, one has to burn more calories than consumed. This, however, is easier said than done. <laughs> the, the staff at the Lifestyle Center taught me about the, difference, the differences between certain foods, the reactions of said foods once consumed, and the proper food portions that are paramount to weight loss and a healthier, living a healthier life. From the very beginning, the Lifestyle Center weight loss program, I was treated and counseled by a panel of dietitians, nutritionists, physicians, physical therapists, and a psychologist to cover all, my, all aspects of my medical and dietary needs. My life has improved because of my treatment at the Lifestyle Center. With the assistance of the phys physicians, I was able to manage my hypertension, reverse my pre-diabetic diagnosis, and begin my weight loss journey. Thank you. <clears throat> the dietitians and nutritionist classes were helpful in providing me with a plethora of information about proper diet and the value of nutrient-dense foods as well as learning about various forms of better eating habits. The physical therapist taught that exercise, I'm sorry, the physical therapist taught that exercise is possible regardless of the restraint of excessive weight and that any movement is better than no movement. Lastly, the psychologist sessions were extremely helpful in realizing a better life balance through self-awareness, self self-care, nutrition, and fitness. The Lifestyle Center has enriched my life. I stand here now, 91 pounds lighter. No longer pre-diabetic. I am maintaining normal blood pressure levels, and I have a new approach and attitude towards food and an eagerness to exercise. I am very thankful for the Cook County's Health Lifestyle Center. I truly believe that continued support to these programs would help more people like me live longer and healthier lives. Thank you. Thank you.